The Commodore 64, now in a home family pack. A family pack containing the world's number one selling home computer. You know where you stand with the Codemasters games if they have the word simulator. That or their very famous new release stuck on everything they ever made. There were loads of them pumped out in the 80s and 90s. And here's one of those budget type simulator games, Arcade Flight Simulator. I was always waiting for the game Simulator Simulator, the new release budget simulator classic, yet it never happened. Shame that. With David Whittaker music playing in the background, spurring me on, it was a case of Tally ho, let's don our flying togs and spin the propellers as it chocks away. And may I say, a spiffing day for it. The machine guns are oiled. And what better way to spend the morning than hunt for the Red Baron and his flying circus? Played across three separate time periods, this does have a teeny tiny bit of simulatoriness about it, but the main aim of the game is to blast everything that flies. You control either the Tiger Moth biplane from World War I, a World War II Spitfire over Pearl Harbor, or the F-14 Tomcat depicted by the lovely image on the box art which takes place somewhere in the 90s. Whatever the situation or plane you're flying, the game itself is pretty much the same. Your task is simply to get into the skies, crush the enemy attackers and destroy their bases, for which you are assigned three planes to tackle the job. Also, you're not just limited to being a static plane in the centre of the screen. You can fly in a scrolling manner to the east or west of the screen, but also fly north or south. However, if you fly due north, then you'll reappear at the bottom of the screen, which can get a little confusing sometimes, especially when landing or whenever you're in battle. Played from a bird's eye perspective, with a large scope of the battle area, complete with enemy fighters, ground obstacles and fuel dumps. These fuel dumps are particularly important, as you'll need to swoop down low and fly past them to top up your fuel gauge, shown here at the bottom of the screen. Although, logistically, I don't know how this refueling was possible, seeing as though it was supposed to be a simulator. Not only is your fuel limited, but also you'll see there is an ammo indicator. And, yep, this is also limited. And the only way to replenish your ammunition is to land on the airstrip. All the while, your enemy planes could be hot on your tail and vary their altitude accordingly, which can be a pain sometimes. On annihilation of the last enemy plane, you must return to base, collect a bomb and proceed back into enemy territory with the intention of dropping said explosive device onto the headquarters of each respective adversary. This game, no matter what you think of it so far, is absolutely blooming brilliant in two-player mode, fighting it out in dogfight fashion. Yet, now I am old, I have nobody to play two-player with right now, as all my friends are responsible and boring, and also my brother wasn't here while I was making this video, so I'll just have to tell you that it's great. Trust me. Saying that though, it does feel a bit small now I've been playing it for a little while and flying around this titchy landscape shooting umpteen planes doesn't feel very engrossing in single player mode. Also, it can be a real pain in the backside to control with the slow to react steering and the whole altitude element which means that your plane has to be the correct height to your opponent before you can shoot anything down. Sometimes trying to get to the fuel felt like a kamikaze mission as I'd regularly just dive into the ground, losing all sense of height and direction. Here's the altitude meter, by the way. I always forget to check this, though. Who looks at altitude meters? As you progress through the levels, there are more targets to be taken out, and the planes become more sophisticated and faster to control. Yet the game in itself doesn't change much at all. To be honest, this isn't the apex of Euro Annihilation. I mean, the graphics and sound were decent enough, and for the budget price at the time, I wasn't complaining. But it doesn't seem to have aged particularly well. 
Maybe if I was playing the two player mode it would have been a different outcome completely though for the video, but definitely give it a whirl with a buddy and you'll see what I mean. It's still worth giving it a go though, all the same. Thanks for watching guys, hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, and please do be sure to let me know your thoughts and memories of Arcade Flight Simulator in the comments section. Do you remember the Codemasters Simulator series of games? Which was the worst one they brought out, and which was your favourite? I'd be interested to get your feedback. If you're new to the channel, then definitely hit subscribe, as there's plenty more Commodore nostalgia just around the corner. And for those of you who have been with me from the very beginning, a massive big thank you once again. Hopefully, I'll see you all in the next one. Until then, bye for now.